Hello, welcome to Vet Talk, the veterinary podcast. I'm Dr. Nathan. Thanks for listening. This is an informational podcast, and we hope you find it a valuable tool to help you understand veterinary medicine and how to better care for your animals. If you want to contact us, please reach out to theveterinarypodcast at gmail.com. You can find a complete list of the podcast episodes on SoundCloud or by going to lickingvalleyvet.com and finding the education page. While you are there, take a look at our blog section for more helpful information. You can also follow Licking Valley Veterinary Hospital's Facebook page if you want regular updates on released podcasts, blogs, and videos. If you find this information helpful, please feel free to make a donation to the continuation of this content. There is a link to do this on the webpage under the podcast list. As always, thanks for listening, and I hope this information is helpful to you. Last time, we talked about the disease EPM, equine protozoal myelitis. We discussed how the disease presents itself and how it is diagnosed. Today we are going to talk about treatment. There are multiple forms of treatment out there and I have gone through phases of using different drugs. So don't take this as hard and fast. Each treatment is tailored to the horse and the owner and what the veterinarian feels comfortable with. I consider my way of treating the right way but I have lost horses and saved horses with my treatment. Basically, like everything in medicine, there are pros and cons to each approach. The methods I will discuss can be used in a variety of ways, but this discussion is mainly to give owners an idea of what is in store. Also, as owners and vets realize this is a complicated disease. Any disease that deals with the nervous system can have a variety of outcomes even with the best of care. If nerves don't heal, or enough nerves don't heal fast enough, the horse can still die or lose nerve function even if the gold standard of treatment is applied. So realize, even cases that look good can take turns for the worst, and cases that look bad can turn the corner and recover. Sometimes clients see the price tags associated with what vets recommend and they think the vet is trying to just make a buck off their diseased animal. After all, if you can treat it more minimally and less expensively, why not? I totally agree. I use my years of clinical experience to tailor treatments to the horses and where they are in disease progression. But I tend to offer what I consider is the best treatment for the horse and the quickest recovery first. Sometimes a slower treatment is feasible, but generally I hit this disease hard and fast to prevent nerve damage. I recently offered a treatment to a horse with EPM and it came to about $1,700. That was unaffordable to the owners, so I offered another treatment course. Will that one work? Maybe. Hopefully. It takes longer, but has about the same cure rate if the horse can survive long enough to be treated. What owners need to understand is vets offer the best and will work with you to offer what is realistic. But realize, even under the best of circumstances, we may not be able to cure the disease. Each level of care you take away from our best is offering one less thing we have going in our and your horse's favor. That being said, here is how I approach some of the cases. First. Does this case need treatment? In the last episode, I mentioned how a lot of horses are exposed to the disease, but not all come down with the disease. Or to say differently, we don't catch signs if they are there and the horse can fight it off without our help. Those don't need treatment. That happens in two ways. One, the horse can fight the disease off with minimal of signs or two, the horse clears the protozoal infection before it reaches the spinal cord. This is sometime between when the horse ingests the sarcocystis, but before it gets to where it does damage in the spinal cord. The ones I am treating are the ones with a positive titer and clinical signs, meaning it has reached the spinal cord, however minimal those signs may be. A positive titer with no signs in my mind does not need treated because up to 65% of horses may have been exposed to this disease. But, at least for me, I'm only testing horses that have signs. 
so maybe I have myself in a catch-22. I haven't found a specific incubation period for EPM, but I believe it's around four to six weeks from histories I have put together. But I have read reports that it can be months to years before the organisms make their move. So that supports that perhaps we should treat every seropositive horse. Or if we could do CSF taps, we could just treat every positive horse that was positive off of CSF. As I discussed in the previous episode, obtaining CSF fluid is not always the easiest, so we typically diagnose off blood samples. So for the practicality of the matter, I go with the theory that if the horse is able to keep from having clinical signs, we can let its body fight off the disease. If we have enough clinical signs to test, and the test comes back positive, we treat. And our goal is to treat before the clinical signs become too severe. What do we need to do to treat? Well, when you break it down, there are three things that have to be accomplished. One, we have to kill the protozoal causing the disease, Sarcocystis neurona. Two, we have to limit inflammation. Three, we have to provide the nutrients needed for the horse to heal. And all those things have to be done for the appropriate amount of time. So we have to realize if the horse is already down, there is probably not much we can do. Those are the cases I hate seeing because if the horse can't stand, I feel like those are the horses we cannot get recovered enough to survive. Remember, it takes time for EPM to do its damage and it takes time to heal. These cases don't heal overnight. If signs start showing six weeks after infection and the signs are minimal, we may not catch them for much longer. So the first thing I usually do is diagnose it as we discussed in the last episode. But I don't have an in-house lab for this test. I have to send the test out. It can take a few days to get test results back. But I don't want to wait on treatment. So I usually administer a whopping dose of steroids. What does this do? It makes the horse feel good and limits the inflammation caused by the protozoa. Often I see the horse get better for a few days because the steroids are reducing inflammation that the parasites have caused. When that happens, the nerves can function better and the horse may look better. This is short-lived. I am doing this to help confirm my diagnosis and keep the horse stable while I'm waiting on results to return from the lab. Then results return and we have a positive for EPM. This is where it gets real because we have to decide what treatment to use to kill the little buggers causing the problems. I don't keep treatments in house because these are expensive treatments. I don't want them to expire on my shelves or have to raise prices to clients because of the inventory I'm holding. So I order these drugs in when we need them. So then it is shipping time to get started on treatment. Generally, that takes another few days. So our treatment may not start for 7 to 10 days until after my diagnosis. What about all the talk about urgency and rush? Well, I also have this in mind. It takes weeks or months for a horse to get to its current state. I won't be able to cure it in a day. So if the horse is going to die in that time, likely I couldn't do much for it anyway. And to me, caution makes sense. Neurologic diseases are good at looking like other neurologic diseases. If the test came back negative and the owners just spent over a thousand dollars on a product they didn't need, that would not help anyone and possibly hinder more diagnostics. So that is my conservativeness coming out. If the horse is in a severe state and the owner wants to get treatment started faster, as long as they are accepting of the financial risk, I will order the drug before test results come back. But most of the time we have a stable enough animal that I don't feel this one week changes our outcomes. Waiting four to five weeks will change the outcome. So if you notice problems, call the vet. But the week to diagnose and get treatment is not changing outcomes of most cases. That takes at minimum a month to treat. The primary drugs I use to treat EPM are Marquis, which is Panazaril, or Rebalance, which is Sulfodiazine and Trimethamine. There are other drugs out there, but these are the drugs I am most comfortable with. A side note, 
I have heard of lay people trying to treat EPM with sulfadiazine trimethoprim. While this will clear up many bacterial infections, it does not treat EPM. I think owners get this confused with the names of the drugs being so similar and try to use it as a cheaper alternative for treatment or prevention. Just remember, it doesn't do what you are thinking. So if you are using it as a preventative measure, you are potentially creating antibiotic resistance and definitely wasting money. Speaking of resistance, some people also will preventatively treat EPM with antiprotozoal drugs. Again, I caution against this as it sets up the perfect scenario for resistance. Treat when we need to, not when you feel you need to. As far as the other two, both are good treatments. I tend to lean towards Marquis because it works faster. While it starts killing the sarcocystis in the first two days of treatment, most of the peak concentrations in the body come between 12 to 18 days, and I feel this is when most of the protozoal die. When they die and they cause inflammation, this is when I warn owners we may see a little step back in improvement of clinical signs because of increased inflammation. Treatment with this drug is done after 28 days of oral administration. Rebalance treats horses just as well, but in general takes 90 days of treatment. In some cases, up to 270 days of treatment. It still treats and about 60% of the horses recover, but it takes longer to have this same effect. While a horse with mild clinical signs may do fine, the more severe the signs, the more speed we need in treatment, hence my use of Marquis. But see why I'm not in a rush to start treatment when we are looking at treatment times from 28 to 270 days? What's the big difference? Time and money. Marquis is more expensive up front, though depending on how you value the time you take to treat something, and if you are treating for more than the 90 days, the cost difference shrinks, and considering the current medical state of the horse, is how we have to decide which treatment to go with. Whichever way we decide to go with, start this treatment and know not every horse will get better, so we have to give them the best chance to get better. We do this with other parts of the treatment as well. Our next part is NSAIDs or steroids. After we get the results, I want to keep inflammation down. One, because it's there. And two, because as we kill the buggers, that will create more inflammation and cause more neurologic problems. So if the horse is really weak, I will use a steroid. Or if the horse seems stable, I use an NSAID such as Equiox, which is a newer form of butte. I reevaluate the horse every two weeks to see if I need to change the drug I'm using. Also, if I'm treating with Marquis, I expect the horse to take a little dip and look neurologically worse in two weeks because of the amount of dead bugs in there. So I tell people to expect this and not to be alarmed when it happens. And again, I see this about at the two week mark, which is when I reevaluate what drugs to use. So yeah, it's almost like I plan these things out. Hopefully, we are able to wean off anti-inflammatories and be off them by about a month of treatment. But each horse is different. So I treat as we see signs. And remember, we can't have any sort of signs during treatment. So stay vigilant and discuss any changes, however small, with your vet because that the effects one protozoa can have on one nerve can have significant effects on the body. Next, we have to offer support to the body. I do two things for support. I want to supply the things that nerves need to heal and the horse needs to be healthy. So something that contains vitamin E for the nerves. The horse's body needs good nutrition standard overall, so it can remain functioning and have enough nutrients and an energy to devote to healing. I have tried many supplements and the one I have been happy with the most for an all-around supplement is Excel Pro Elite. I plan on doing some podcasts on this supplement later. But for our discussion now, this offers overall support to the body, has anti-inflammation components in it, which is great to help limit the damage the protozoa are doing, and has vitamin E in it, which helps the nerves heal. 
So I put horses on this at a minimum while they are being treated and recovering. But I am not upset if they are on this supplement for the rest of their life, because it's an overall good supplement. There are other supplements out there, but I have found Excel to be one supplement that does everything I need in this disease. The other thing that I have started doing is completing pulse electromagnetic therapy. I plan on doing a podcast on this technology in the future as well, but for now I will say that what it does is help cells that typically heal slowly heal more quickly. Guess what? Nerves heal very slowly. So this is something we want to speed up. However, I do not start this right away. I wait to start this part of the treatment until time has passed and the protozoa are dead. So marquee, I can start pulse treatments sooner than rebalance. Hopefully, we have a full return to expected work of the horse when we complete these three aspects of treatment. But can this disease relapse? The short answer is, I don't know. I've had many talks with fellow veterinarians and there's debate about whether horses fall prey to the same infection months or years later, perhaps because all the parasites were not killed, or if they are reinfected because certain horses are not lucky about what they eat or are more prone to not being able to fight off disease. I've talked with vets which have completed multiple courses of treatments with horses to get them better. I wonder sometimes if nerves are just taking longer to heal than we expect rather than reinfection, but I can't say with certainty what is going on. Another question people ask me is how long recovery will take. I don't really know, but at least one month if we are using Marquis. Because we have to kill the bugs before the horse can recover, and then the nerves still must heal themselves. Nerves are slow, so that's where we give them good support and maybe try to increase the healing with pulse therapy. Some nerves never recover. So at the end of our treatment of protozoa, we pretty much give the body time and support it needs to heal. If at the end of treatment I'm still seeing things get worse or haven't seen improvement, that's when I retest and reevaluate if we need to continue treatment. The main thing to remember is this disease can be deadly and should be taken seriously, but we have ways of treating this disease. Thanks for listening. I'm Dr. Nathan. I hope this information was helpful to you and gives you a little more perspective on the world. If you want to reach out to us, email us at theveterinarypodcast at gmail.com. Don't forget to tell your friends about our podcast and check out LickingValleyVet.com for information on blogs, videos, and the complete list of podcasts in our education section.